I'm now joined by Coach Mike Westoff. And Coach, they're one and seven. I really don't even know where to start or what even to ask you after this game. <laughs> where do we go? It's a tough one. One thing for sure, though, for Ray and for Brian, that kickoff return play where that off returner laid down in the end zone, that did not come out of my notebook, guys. So I want to make sure you've got that down <laughs> before you look at me. And because I don't want to take responsibility for that one. Why would they even attempt that play, okay. Coach? Okay. I mean, it made no sense what to me. What you have, and it's obvious Percy Harvin is going to be a good kickoff returner. He can explode. He came close to breaking one today. They tried to counter. I wish they had tried it to the wide field. So you know that that defense and the covers team is going to really suck over to him. So what you do is you draw them over to, and then he has a throw back. But the way it was executed, when he went to throw the ball... The guy was still on the ground. I was still on the ground. So <laughs> it really it really made for a, a, a very very, very difficult and, and really a, uh, an unprofessional play. It really did. All right, let's talk about the quarterback's play because both Geno Smith and Michael Vick both had three turnovers each. Let's first start with Geno Smith, who just looked like he was just unprepared, had no idea what he was doing he really, out there today. He did. I totally agree. He looked like a deer in headlights. I really thought that after these last two weeks, and particularly last week, that I saw some blueprint for the offense. Throwing on first down, you know, mixing in the runs, mixing, mixing the formations, getting the ball to Amaro, and there were some really positive things. Gino came out his first pass. They ran a slant to Decker. He threw the ball four yards behind him. And, and it, it went downhill from there. Three interceptions on eight passes. Three interceptions. They gave the ball. They gave the ball to Buffalo. I, th I want. I believe it was eight times over the 50-yard line today. That's incredible. That's unheard of. So Gino just and I, I totally understand. Make the change to Mike. Make well, the let's talk about Vick. the play to Mike because Mike had that spark. They seemed to be. They got within one touchdown, but then he turned the ball over three he, times he as well. Too. Well, you know, by that time though, when Mike, when Michael Vick first started, I saw some that you can tell that he's not totally in sync. You could see some of those things, but you saw some elusiveness from him and some explosion. And he, he moved them down the field right before half. They get the score, and they they really look pretty good. Now, it did hurt them the fact that the Jets squandered another timeout, and, and they really had to hurry. Now, they made a 55-yard field goal, and they got points on the board. But I did like some of the variety that Michael gives them in the red zone. I liked that. There were some positive things, but yet you, you just there wasn't enough. Now, later on. All of a sudden, when that front four from Buffalo, which leads the league in sacks, they've got three. They've got three defensive linemen in the top six in the AFC, and that doesn't even count Kyle Williams. And I think he might be the best. Uh, they ate him up. They pinned their ears back, and they really came after him. And they put the pressure on him, and then the turnovers that that he had. So really, in that regard, I think it was a little bit unfair to Mike in the way that third quarter went. And plus, Michael Vick hasn't even practiced with the first no, team all week. No, he hasn't. But let's talk about going into that third quarter. They had turned the ball over the Jets, but still within one score of tying up this game. It's, but what it, happened in that third quarter? It, it, was, it was amazing. Really, I thought one of the, <laughs> before I even get there, as bad as the Jets were doing, Buffalo, right before half, goes Just, with a no huddle. And they, they squandered the clock themselves. They gave the Jets a chance to get back in. That's just now, the, the Jets, Jets had a ball. chance to get back into this game. They, they have to kick off to start the, to start the half. And they, they kick Buffalo back. Uh, Buffalo punts. They don't field the punt. They let it roll and then get a penalty. A 60-yard net play. It totally reversed the field position. Then the Jets hit a very short punt. They hit, I think it was a 40-yard punt or so with a with an 18 or 19-yard return. Now, all of a sudden, Buffalo's in great field position. Now, the Jets' defense held them to a field goal. They held them to some field goals. But all of a sudden, another turnover. Then the fumble. And it just went downhill. There was no continuity. And that third quarter was an absolute disaster, just a disaster. Is this season over? Oh, you hate to say it's over because, you know, I'm, I'm a believer. I know guys play hard. They have a lot of pride. I did not expect this. I, I actually, I predicted the way they would come out and play. I saw that blueprint that I was excited about, and it just went downhill. This wasn't a great Buffalo team. They couldn't run the ball. They, their best two running backs are out with, with Jackson and Spiller are gone. And, of course, then, uh, you know, and Sammy Watkins makes the really bonehead play, which he shouldn't have done, although the play before that, he was wide open. He just missed them. Orton missed them. And then they came back. I don't think it's over. I don't want to say it's over. But this was a game that I believe would put them back on track. Get them going. Create a style to which you can play. It totally disintegrated today. It just totally disintegrated. 
how they rebound from this, this is going to be a tough one. I'm not sure. I honestly don't know. All right, Coach, I appreciate it. Oh, okay. Brian Ray, that wasn't his playbook. Wasn't in his playbook. Back to you. <laughs>